Hi, I'm Mike, the host of Heroes Next Door. I want to invite you to come with me to do a station rigs on this incident command unit located out of Loyal Sox, Pennsylvania. We're going to meet up with one of their operators of this unit, Let's see if he's in. Hello. Hey, how's it going? Good. I'm Mike. Rich. Nice to meet you. All right. Nice to meet you, Rich. Um, my name is Rich Kashera. I'm with, with Loyal Sock Volunteer Fire Company for just shy of 20 years. Uh, started in the Explorer Vol or Junior Firefighter Program, raised all the way through the rank to captain uh, currently. Firefighter, EMT, hazmat tech, pretty much kind of do it all. And I'm a communications specialist for the um, incident management unit. Awesome. This is one of the things that we haven't done a whole lot of on our channel. We've done the rescues, we've done the engines, we've done the tankers. We've only had one incident command unit before and it was a trailer. The fact that you guys have this in a fire department versus a countywide system was pretty cool to see and I really want to take a look at this. Are you able to walk us around and tell us what's going on in it? Sure, we'll start on the outside and then work our way in. Okay. Uh, you. So, um, I like to, when I explain the unit to folks in the public, have you ever seen the movie SWAT where in the very beginning they take the SWAT team up to the bank, punch into the cameras and then run the wire back to the truck? Ken David, all units, we're sending in a secure phone. We have that capability that we can pull up and then have inside um, camera feeds punched in to the unit and have that capability in addition to if we're out somewhere supporting a disaster somewhere, telephone lines drop to us, um, cable drop to us if um, it's within pretty much a city area that we're not out in an urban interface. Um, we can also use the unit to branch out. So if we have to do a command post in a school or in a tent or anything like that, we have switches and a support cache that can follow and be um, called out as well. Um, that we can branch off and use this as the infrastructure to be able to support the outside operations. Yeah, I had no idea you, these things even have the capability to plug in to whatever unit you place you're going to. Yeah, it's pretty pretty neat. Um, there's folks with, in our first due that we have um, pre-coordinated infrastructure that we know we can go to building X, use the network port and out of this room to get into their infrastructure. There's some area schools that um, with a remote um, username and password, we can pull up their school cameras and things. Nice. So it plays into our favor yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah, that definitely helps with that safety aspect of any big incident. Yeah. Um, of course, if it's nicer or kind of rainy out like today, we have an awning that can be pulled out as well okay. to have cover, um, cover for sign in. Um, we have a portable desk that kind of slides right on top and latches in. Okay. Um, so if you have to do accountability or take attendance, it's right there, sign in sheet. It often really turns into the coffee donut table right, for right. the cops that show up. And <laughs> um, we have a kind of neat phone, wireless phone. So if you're out somewhere or need to use a phone, you're not traipsing all the way in to use a phone. There's a phone right outside. Right, because the way I understood this, uh, and there's a lot of people that go inside of this unit when you get an active incident, yeah. whether it's the chiefs, uh, other stakeholders. So you don't really want to keep going in and out, getting out. Once you're kind of settled in, plugged all in, you're going to work from the outside and give instructions. Is that correct? Correct. And the other philosophy, too, is we don't want someone coming up and um, trying to make a phone call while we're discussing tactics or anything like that. Okay. There's a phone out here just for that reason. Okay. So if it's a big enough incident, there's an officer staged at the door, stopping who goes in and out, and um, they can use the phone outside as well. Right, I love that it's just kind of mounted there. You yep. think it would fall over, but no, it's- No, it it's actually, on. we've never lost it, so. <laughs> That's uh, awesome. Uh, ironically, it's more so we keeping it charged and ready to go is, is the big challenge. Okay, um, now I noticed there's not a whole lot of cabinets on the outside. Correct. But you do have a couple of different things. What yep. are all these things for? In, in these two cabinets, we have support cribbing, because when we go out to the middle of nowhere, cribbing for this unit becomes pretty key to keep it leveled for satellite coverage. Okay. Um, right now we have two satellites on the roof, a Starlink unit that we just got, and an old um, mobile sat um, automatic um, fly kit that um, would pretty much give us satellite communications, video, data, phone, right. out to the middle of nowhere. So it's kind of like a camper. Like when I show up to a campsite, you never know what's gonna happen. Exactly. It could be a little unlevel. You wanna make sure that this thing stays nice and level, so when you bring those up, you don't tip. Yep, 
Even in town, we run into issues with stabilization, with um, some of the parking lots that are elevated, that to get it level, we actually put cribbing underneath to make sure that the front end just doesn't, um, front axles just don't take a big dip down. Okay. That they takes the weight off of the, the chassis so we don't get any twists and Gotcha, like that. so that's the, the table, the cords, and the cribbing all in yep. there. Okay, anything um, else down here? Down here, just like any car, we have um, about 10 batteries, car, huge car batteries. Okay. Um, that runs the truck and some of the electronics. Right. So if the generator goes out, we have a few hours of battery backup um, to get us by. Um, otherwise, we just have the front um, officer's door um, along with some scene lighting um, along the sides and things just to light up your kind of gathering area outside. I noticed it's a long vehicle. Yeah. How long is this? Just shy of 40 feet. Okay. So no real other special um, driving as long as it's under emergency conditions. You don't really need a CDL for it. Okay. Um, some of us do have CDLs here, so we can get away with taking it for maintenance and fuel that way. Otherwise, it's just a, as long as it's under emergency conditions, right. we well, follow the like, PA it, law. It's kind of like a camper. Yeah. You know, I can go and buy a camper that's you know 38, 40, and 40 feet long, and I can drive that around without a CDL. Exactly. So it's kind of the same thing. But yep. the fact that it's an emergency vehicle, does it have lights and sirens and it, stuff on it too? It does have lights and sirens on it, 360 okay. all the way through. Um, pretty much all wheeling, uh, code three package. We added on a bright kind of light bar because driving at night, the um, headlights and high beams aren't that bright. Okay. So we literally had to throw it on and it pretty much lights up clear as day <laughs> for us. Um, going up to our surrounding counties and out in the middle of nowhere to watch for deer and things like that. Right. Now, obviously, you're one of the captains of here, right? Yep. You've driven this. Yes. Is it easy to drive or is it difficult? How? how I describe it, it to folks because normally when it goes out, it's going out when it's pouring down rain, windy, um, snow, or out in the middle of summer, that it can be driving a brick. Okay. And so the littlest wind can shift you side to side. And some of the weight, once we get inside, you can see will shift on you, just like an engine with water. You right. have to worry about the weight and things. Okay. And um, you also have to worry about more bumps because you have technology and electronics in there that are made to be in a house or in an office, not going over bumps and things. Right. That you have to worry about the their components so as well. What kind of incidents would you take this out on? So we've had this out on anything from an SRT SWAT incident, um, supporting those tactics, lost hikers, lost children um, in the area, major sporting events. We have Little League Baseball in the Right, because um, you're close to Williamsport here. Yep. Um, it's been over there supporting that incident. Um, the MLB Classic, that's also uptown Williamsport. Um, the 4th of July celebrations within the North Central PA region. Okay. Um, up in this area, we have Pumpkin Chunkin. Okay. Um, so where they launch pumpkins yeah. across, um, they actually do it across Pennsylvania into New York. So we have inter, <laughs> interstate uh, border stuff that goes on. Um, federal um, visitors, we've okay. getting, had a couple of presidential visits that we've rolled this out on and right. had um, all the, I call alphabet soup companies, um, packed in this for a while, yeah, yeah. um, different presidential campaigns that have come to town. Um, so amateur radio is another big use. Wow. Okay. Um, our local amateur radio club, um, has equipment in it that if they deploy somewhere or we deploy that they need, um, that level of communications, um, they fulfill some of the, the communication experts and have ex antennas that they'll throw, antenna cables out the windows um, to talk. They also do major race support. Um, there's folks that like to go running in the mountains for miles, for long durations, that the amateur radios have check um, in stations that they report back to this as the mothership or command post okay. type thing that it supports that way. So too. you are getting this truck out quite a bit. It gets called out more outside of the Wellsack Township, Williamsport area, okay. more than it does locally. Fair enough. Um, but the, all through the media and all through the public presentations that we do on it, if you see this going out, it's going to something big. Right. Please kind of stay away and things. <laughs> 
and we've actually had members try to like pop in to see what's going on and they've been kicked out um, <laughs> even though they're pretty, all members. even even though they're on the member and at times us as the operators get kicked out as well okay because there may be some intelligence level or there's too many people in the bus that okay they're there and it's called instant management versus command bus or okay. command unit for a reason because we're not taking over their incident we are there to support we'll fill in Everybody that uh, runs on this truck has to have all their NIMS, 100, 200, 300, 400, 700, 800 yep. command general staff right. to be able to operate at that kind of command level to understand what's going on. Right, so that diversified command system that you yes. go along and all the different stakeholders that go and get involved with that, whether that's PICO, whether that's fire department, whether that's police departments, yep. you know, all that kind of stuff all comes to this unit to help kind of run those incidents. Correct, Forestry Ser Pennsylvania Forestry Service calls it out um, for some of their land searches as well, along with Pennsylvania State Police. Can we take a look on the inside? Yep, we can go inside. So I've got a question for you here. If yep. some of the viewers are out there, they're thinking, wait, I thought when you join a fire company and you're a volunteer, all you do is fire. But this is not, this is technology-based information. Yes. Yep. This is, you know, fire-related to, to a certain extent, but you don't have to have fire certifications to be a member, right? No, you do not. So to be a member of Loyal Sock, the, the minimum training that we pretty much ask you to have is um, your federal NIMS 100, 200, um, 700, 800. Okay. First aid CPR and your hazardous materials awareness. Okay. Just so that if you get out somewhere, you can at least know what you're kind of walking right, yourself right. into. And we do all training free. Um, the station pays for all your training and things. So okay. you're getting pretty much professional certifications for free. Right. Um, so how would they go about getting hold of you? Do they, do, is there a website? Yep. Just stop Sta by the station? Station18.org is the best place. Um, click on the Volunteers With Us tab. And that's our full online application. And then once that gets filled out, it goes to our um, membership committee. They review it. They'll call you for like a small interview, get to know you type meeting. And as long as your background check um, comes back okay, you're pretty much in the door. We're not, we're hurt. In, th in this day and age, we're hurting for volunteers. Volunteers yeah, is yeah. taking a big, um, Dive. That's so, one of the reasons why we're doing Heroes Next Door. We want to make awareness to you guys out in the public that these guys need help. So if you have the technology or the knowledge of, or even the desire to come help, come down. You know, volunteer, whether it's here or in your local area, get some volunteer hours in, help out your community. We have a great uh, live in program for the college students um, that we've had folks come live in the station with no training whatsoever. And by the four years that they're done, they've walked away with their EMT, hazmat operations, firefighter one, the one um, young lady had her firefighter two when she left. So wow. it was pretty well, that's a, that's they make huge, it worth it. Yeah, that's for actually a huge benefit and, for volunteerism, not just the tax benefits you can get from yep. it, but the educational benefits and, you can get from it. Um, we understand Education comes first. You're right. here to go to college. You know, you're giving them a place to stay, basically rent free, which yep. is huge nowadays. Rent is, you know, anywhere from two thousand to three thousand exactly. dollars in some apartments where I'm coming from. And then, you know, they're getting their education on top of that and, yep. and getting those life skills of being out on their own. That's I'm anxious to get inside. Can yep. we take a look? Yep, come on in. Wow, I didn't think it was this big. Yep. So we're in the conference room, briefing room, so to speak, and we have two, tech, two TVs in the back, along with a phone and two radios and things in the wall. That way, if you're having an IC brief, you're not losing your situational awareness of the radio traffic, and if they need a phone call back to discuss tactics or something, you have a phone back here. Okay. Um, TVs to monitor your command, chat program like web eoc or if there we have maps up we can push maps up if we have a suspect's profile up um as well we can put that stuff up for them to talk about okay. back here um we've been out on hostage negotiations where we've had the negotiators back here and then we just slide the door shut right. and have all the tactical stuff up front okay. so okay um as we move towards the back um, we have some storage cabinets kind of here and here. Okay. And then our main kind of brains of the, of the bus 
are here in the um, computer cabinet. Okay. And then here is all the radios. Wow. Um, it's pretty much stacked. So one of the main things we do when we first get there is we just toss the doors. We okay. li they literally just come off because if you have to plug and play, um, you have that advantage just right here. Right. Onboard server with battery backup, um, some of the brains that control um, the satellite dishes and things onto now, the back. With the, you're talking about that. I noticed the tower off the back. Yeah. That's a camera, right? Yeah. So it, it actually is a camera tower. Um, and also we can put radio antennas up on it as well to extend coverage because we do have an onboard repeater. Okay. Um, that's pre-programmed for the cache radios that's in the bus as well. So if you get somewhere and you don't have a frequency, we can just pop one in essentially um, for that operational period that's kind of pre-coordinated, pre-set up for this kind of region um, with DHS and such. Um, we've gotten those approvals already. Nice. Um, and we do that annually. Okay. And with that camera, I you know, I watch a lot of television, a lot of shows for yep. EMS and stuff. Does it have facial recognition like they do on TV? It does to a degree. We have a mass cam and then we have four remote cameras that are stored underneath the seats in okay. the back here that we can put out on a mesh network. So it pretty much covers about a football field, depending how you have the mesh and it's synced up okay. um, correctly. So if you have a bad guy, we can post cameras out on like the, the side of a house or a big event downtown, we can put cameras up remotely in, in addition to patching the city's cameras and so we've done that before just right. to see what's going on. That's pretty cool to hear. I like the fact that you remove the doors because even just down here, it's kind of you know tight. It's tight. And if you've got multiple people here kind of going in and out or you know back and forth, having that removable makes it easy to just go right by it. Yep. And behind this, they got a lot of buttons so, here. Can I yeah. just start pushing them? No, 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 no. <laughs> we actually have something pretty cool that we can turn the front and uh, rear overhead off and it goes to night lights. If we're operating at night, we have a red light kind of feature that you're not losing your night vision going in and out and right. things like that. So that's kind of neat too. Absolutely. Um, when we're operating off a generator, we have to watch our load capacity. So we pretty much can run all the electronics off of the generator and the batteries okay. while recharging the batteries. And then of course we have our stabilization um, just like you'd have in an RV. Okay. okay. So, now your generator, you mentioned that, that is it under the truck or do you, is it like a remote? Do you put well, it off it, the side? It's built in. It's on, built into the truck. Um, on board, we actually have to put um, an extension hose out because if it's running, some of the exhaust can come back in. Okay. So for safety for the folks inside, right. we have to make sure that the, the carbon and everything's pushed out and away. Right. Same thing I do when I'm camping. Exactly. Yep. Um, we do have Wi-Fi built in up top. And um, it does have smoke detectors. We just took them down to replace batteries. Okay. This is our big radio cabinet. Wow. Just like the computer, it has its own. Holy. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, yeah. at least. 18 at least. <laughs> um, we just got in the Pennsylvania state radio. Um, so that, that's coming. It just hasn't been installed yet, and that way we're on the state system right? Um, as well. But we can punch in um, all the radios here in the rack support the dispatch console um, here on the counter. And if we are fortunate to get a dispatcher, they can sit there and dispatch um, or manage the incident right there from the console. So when they call 911, if you're on an incident, they can actually free up the 911 callers and actually get incidents here to do dispatching? Yeah, they bring um, the different counties in North Central Task Force, like Cumming, Tioga, Sullivan, Bradford, Union, Clinton, and Potter. That's the our central kind of region. It's expanded out to, I believe, Snyder and I believe Montour County as well. Okay. So we're managing multiple radio systems. Yeah. So they're all pre-programmed in um, that depending where you sit in the room, um, the dispatcher could literally hit the two tones for that county's station 
and dispatch w with their mobile CAD coming in. And we've had dispatchers come in and they get 911 calls here. They, um, a lot of the counties are now up to that way of getting things remotely. If we don't get a dispatcher, well, you can have your lead EMS person come in and take an EMS position, a fire position, a police position, amateur radio position. What so everything that we learn in NIMS, NIMS that's is, exactly, here. is here. We yeah. are literally bringing the 911 center of the office to manage the incident right. to your scene. Right. So I was fortunately around or unfortunately around back when 9-11 happened. One of the biggest things was communication issues. When those towers that were on the towers went down, communication was a big issue. This truck solved some of those issues. It does. Up in the cabinets, we have a cache of radios. So if you're a responder coming in and you don't have our frequencies, well, we can issue you a radio. Can we take a look at those? Sure. Here and here we have caches of radios that if we get somewhere, and you don't have a radio or your channels, we can issue you out. And it looks like you're using a lot of Kenwoods. <laughs> we are we are using a lot of Kenwoods. Yeah. Um, one major reason is they were the latest and greatest when we got it in 2005. Okay. With um, some voice scrambling that you could do at the, uh, and still do um, with it. One of the next technology upgrades as money becomes available is replacing um the all the portables on the unit and you said direction. these are all whiteboard they're all whiteboard and dry erase okay and magnetic so we can put maps up and with magnets that way you're not pinching any holes or replacing right right peg boards and things and can easily erase and if and i say okay i'm gonna set up here i can write mike's desk yeah <laughs> essentially right here this is our master control station so you see there's four monitors <laughs> yeah it's all one computer okay and with the iPad, whatever I pull up on these computers, I can then on the iPad push to the TVs to the front or the two TVs to the back. Okay. So whoever is sitting here is pretty much the camera controller, the map guy, right. the one moving the screen. So and in our away. terms, he's kind of the producer. Yes, he's exactly. He's letting everybody know where that's going on. Yep. Um, phone taker, you name it. He's That's the position that normally the folks that run the unit end up sitting down to fill um so right now we primarily run off of starlink we have at&t first net and team mobile and a cradle point in the cabinet that runs dual sims when we get out to our remote areas it's starlink um, we do still have the moto uh satellite up on top but we have to call to get that activated and that can take some time but with starlink we've been phenomenal uh support and things and haven't had any issues so yeah it's a good technology crossed. to have yeah that, that's out there the one thing that i notice when we're i'm looking around here is the quality of the build of this thing i mean this is top-notch countertops top-notch cabinetry something that i would actually see in my house yep if we were to go out and buy a new one today two million if not more. wow i mean almost close to a ladder truck these yeah. days or a tower truck <laughs> yeah yeah just because of the the slide outs the technology that we'd um, interface right. and one of the biggest lessons we learned was don't spend money on the technology because that's going to outdate first okay do your infrastructure spend the money on the infrastructure right so you can always update, update the technology update. later on because with the latest and greatest of how technology is changing um, what's great today Tomorrow it's outdated. There's <laughs> right, something better, right. bigger and better. I like the fact that you guys have them actually, you know, bungeed in. So when you're driving down the road, these things aren't sliding all around. No, everything pretty much stays on the countertops. There's okay. Velcro for the phones. The bungees are for the chairs, so the chairs don't go sliding sure, up and sure. down. Um, nine times out of ten, we usually miss at least one chair. <laughs> that when we make the corner, you hear this. <laughs> oh, we missed a chair. So. There it goes, but um, other than that, everything pretty much stays um, on top. When I said outside of it, things shaken. Right. The things are fragile. We have computers, we have the console. Things don't really like to be bounced around. So when we get there, we have a little bit of a troubleshooting with things as well. Okay. Um, as we move front, if we're not lucky, like I said, not lucky enough to get a dispatcher, we have different command positions um or operations positions right police fire ems the amateur folks like to sit up towards the front there um one of the guys during one of the amateur contests uh we like to advertise it he was able to talk to the space shuttle 
Wow. So that was pretty pretty <laughs> impressive. Yeah. And things too. Um, we've had AT and T FirstNet come in to support one of the big running races, and they brought um, FirstNet phones, PPT phones for us to use, and set up on our master um, computer station a dispatch console for that. So that was pretty cool to use as well. Right. We have um, laptop computers up in here that, like I said, if we have to go set into a school, we can outfit and move into the school along with a couple extra phones. Everything else is more your paper, your um, general office supplies, so sure. to speak. And we like to joke that we have a snack cabinet. <laughs> well, you're going to be out here for a while. so um, For hostages and crackers. hostages. Uh, <laughs> usually is what we end up dipping into because being out a long time um, right. we have a snack cabinet so to speak and some extra cups paper plates so when you order that pizza um <laughs> you le and that's normally what gets forgotten is the paper plates napkins and things right. so we do have a little bit of uh supplies that way it's almost like your own little rehab <laughs> exactly it does have its own front heater okay and back heater okay so you can Literally ice the front and have a sauna in the back. Well, so, heat is an issue for any of those electronics yeah. too. So you don't want to overheat it. If it's a you know 90 degree day and you're out on a SWAT job for four and a half hours, you got to keep it pretty yeah. cool. We're making our way up to the front. Can you sit in the driver's seat and kind of show us how this all operates from the driver's seat? Sure. The one thing that I'm surprised you haven't asked yet is where's the bathroom? Oh yeah. We do not have a bathroom. Okay. Under. Number one, we don't want to have to clean it up after it. <laughs> right. And number two, we don't want people traipsing in to use, to use it okay. and hear what's going on. Now I can go sit up front, but that's, <laughs> that was one thing I wanted to touch on is we don't have bathroom just for that reason. We don't want people tracing in um, to, to use it, steal intelligence, and then go out and splurge to the media right. or the media want to right. use the, the bathroom. So the inside. fire department is still going to have to call in the rehab. They'll yep. bring the bathrooms. <laughs> yep. If it's big enough that this comes out, porta potty should be one of your uh, next calls to have drops right. um, to the scene type Right, thing. right, that's cool. So as we make our way up front, like I said, we have the amateur station to our right. Um, we actually have a desk. So as we're driving down the road and we may not know where exactly where we're going, if we're lucky to have two people, we can boot up one of the laptops and he can look up maps or GPS. Um, more so also answer phone calls as we're going down the road, right. collecting the intelligence. you're constantly getting in intelligence as you're going to yep. the scenes. So it's nice to have that person there at the desk going down the road, collecting that and taking things because last thing you want to do is drive this, manage a cell phone, um, right. listen to the radios that are up front here um, as you're going down the road. Okay. Now up front here, it looks like a typical run in of a fire truck exactly we wanted to keep everything um fire operator friendly so no matter whether you get into the engine the rescue everything your controls are all pretty much the same just like in a car we have our own air conditioner up front here okay heater up front so just like a fire truck it's got its own red lights oh wow okay siren and everything right it's got um, a backup camera cause... backup camera as well and that is really nice to have um, because you, there's no window in the back. There's <laughs> right. just TVs. Right. So backing this beast up can be challenging, um, especially when you can't see your front end. Yep. And the tail sticks off your back axle quite a distance too. Right. So that's pretty neat that way. Um, does, it, does it drive pretty much like the fire trucks? It drives like a fire truck, especially with the weight distribution. Okay. With all, Everything that you've seen so far coming in, we have to worry about weight just like a, a pumper. Right. Just because of the the weight shifting um, as you're going down the road. Like I said, it's literally like driving a brick right. um, at times. Now you have a bunch of TVs up here, speakers. Yep. Do you have a, a regular radio? Like, can yes. I listen to the music? We have a regular radio. <laughs> okay. We don't call it a radio, uh, like a car radio, right. it's our digital clock. Did, okay. <laughs> um, we don't want anything to be distracting to the, the driver as he's going, but sure. to hear some of the what's being on the radio news coming in too. Um, and there's no cup holder. Right. So we have a nice oh. caution, little caution tape here <laughs> right. that uh, 
your your diet coke goes up in. And... So the next design, make sure we put some yeah, cup holders. Cup in. holders in. Right. It's a nice, comfortable seat. It's got the air ride, just it like does the have fire air, trucks. Yeah. Air ride, just like the fire truck. Um, when it was originally built, it has its own alarm system, just like a house. <laughs> well, with coming in and out, that was the first thing to get turned off because. <laughs> right. But it did come in handful. Um, that we have to leave it somewhere overnight. Okay. We'll arm it and. If, if it needs to be, they'll, we'll still get phone calls and things. Yeah, so yeah. it's good to have there, but we're not going to use it on a regular basis. Yeah. I noticed it, it does have both doors. Yep. Unlike some RVs where you have to go in through the back or the side, yep. it has exit doors up here too. Yeah, just like a normal fire truck, you can get out both sides. Um, primarily, we leave the um, officer seat essentially locked. Okay. Um, pretty much once we get to a scene, do we unlock the doors, every main entries through the back. Man, this is absolutely amazing. There's so much technology in this. There's so much um, that behind the scenes that you don't even think about. You know, when an incident happens, all the personnel that has to show up, all the technology that has to show up, you know, it's amazing that, you know, I didn't know all this exists and I've been in the fire department for 30 years. So the, the fact that the public is getting the opportunity to watch this and see some of this stuff, you know, hopefully it's gonna entice them to say, hey, I can also help with that. That's something that I'm interested in and they can come down and start volunteering. Yep. Thank you so much, Rich, for taking us around. We really Anytime. appreciate that. Once again, this was Heroes Next Door. This was a special station rigs with Loyal Sock out of Pennsylvania with their incident command unit. Thank you all for watching, but before we end, hit that subscribe, hit that notification, smash these like buttons, make comments below. We really want to hear what you guys think about this. And don't forget, we do have that members page. So go ahead and join that and see a whole lot more behind the scenes. We'll see you again next week.